Okay, I'm making a video for 2-1 because I don't think we'll have time to, for me to talk about during class after your test. So I'm teaching it this way so that we can keep going with our plans. So starting chapter two, we're doing reasoning and proof. This is a logic chapter. It also has some proofs in it that we'll get to later on. 2-1 is only talking about inductive reasoning. There's two kinds of reasoning. There's inductive and deductive. Today, we're only talking about inductive reasoning. So inductive reasoning is using an observed pattern to make a conclusion or a prediction. The most common one is counting, skip counting, like two, four, six, eight. You're using what the numbers are given to you to predict the next number. A conjecture is a prediction. So you're using inductive reasoning to make a prediction. That's what I want you to understand for today. So here's an example. It says make a conjecture about adding two positive integers. So we are observing this pattern. So two is positive, three is positive, and when we add it, we got another positive number. Four is positive, 10 is positive, and we add it, we get another positive number. Three is positive, five is positive, we add it and we get a positive number. This is not all the options that can happen, but we're using this sample to make a prediction about the future. So my conjecture, which is a prediction about this scenario, it says the sum of any two positive integers will be a positive integer. So we're using kind of a sample to make a generalized statement as to what's gonna happen with any two positive integers. So the conjecture, like I said, is a prediction. To show that a conjecture is true, you have to show it's true for all cases to prove that it is true. That's really hard to do. This one is a little bit easier. To show a conjecture is false, all you have to do is give one counterexample. So a counterexample just means an example that shows that that statement is false. So here's some good examples. Hopefully this will make sense then. All math teachers at Blue Ridge Middle School are male. Well, we know that that is false, but in order to show that's false, we need to give one example. So you can just say Miss Fritz, or to make it completely a complete statement, Miss Fritz is a Blue Ridge Middle School math teacher and is female. So one example that shows that there is a teacher at Blue Ridge Middle School who teaches math that is not male is enough to show that the statement is false. Next example, all prime numbers are odd. All we need is one number that is prime, but not odd. Two is prime, but it is not odd. So this statement tells us that this statement is wrong, is false. The last one, the quotient of two whole numbers is a whole number. Remember, quotient is division. So my counter example is showing that that statement is not true. So here's two whole numbers, nine and two. When I divide them, the statement says that the answer is gonna be a whole number and it is not. There's a lot of examples that you can use here. One, one divided by two gives you 0.5 and that's not a whole number. So there's lots of different examples. You only need one to show that that is not true. This is a very short lesson. You can pause it and relook at it if you need to. The biggest idea is I need you to know is what is inductive reasoning? What is a conjecture and be able to make a conjecture and be able to come up with a counter example to prove that a statement is not true. Here's the homework that I'd like you to do that's also posted on the notes online, and I will go over any questions that you have before you take a quiz on this next block.